Raja Sabha and a special uh, warm wishes to you. It's your foundation day. So give them a very big hand. It's Telangana's big day today. Uh, Anna Malai, president of the Tamil Nadu uh, BJP and a special thanks to him because he's come despite an attack of food poisoning. Uh, no conspiracy there. It was just something that he ate. And uh, John Brittas is the Rajya Sabha CPIM fiery MP, former journalist turned uh, member of parliament. Uh, thank you all uh, for joining us. Do sit. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome once again to the India Today South Conclave. Now, when you look at India geographically, it seems as if we are very different countries, particularly when you look at the Hindi heartland and the politics of the South. And as we build up to the big 2024 elections, the question is, who will win the South? That's what we're going to debate. And we have very special guests. Joining us, Manikam Tagore of the Congress Party, give him a big hand. Suresh Reddy of the Telangana or the Bharat, Bharat Rashtra Samiti now, the BRS from Telangana. Anna Malai, the President of the Tamil Nadu BJP. And John Brittas, the CPIM MP from Kerala. So all bases covered. And uh, I'm going to start with the man in the middle. Anna Malai, you're in a way encircled by three people who may well represent anti-BJP voices. So I want to start with you because soon after the victory in Karnataka, the Congress leadership claimed that the South has become BJP Mukt, BJP Mukt Dakshin. How do you respond to those who say the South is now a fortress which the BJP is unable to breach? It's the last frontier. Good afternoon, uh, Rajiv Si. Thank you so much for inviting me here. We all know in the state of Karnataka, coming to the first part of your question, it's a very, very different state electorally. After 1985, no state has come back to power for the second time, even for Congress multiple times. Last 36 years, nobody could repeat it. This time we were hopeful that uh, we should be the party that is repeating it. Not so. But having said that, BJP has retained its vote share, 36%. Uh, we have done fairly well, considering three chief ministers in five years, two chief ministers in uh, BJP for the last five years. And we have pretty results you are a senior political person. Now, 25 out of 27 BJP has got, we'll repeat again. Now, coming to the Congress uh, question of uh, Congress Mukt Bharat, of course, Pondicherry, BJP has made a mark. We are part of a coalition government. Our ministers are there. But South this time, 2024 would be the time which will have a breakout for BJP, especially in states like Tamil Nadu and Telangana. Along with uh, Karnataka and Kerala, we see a huge breakout. I will explain in the subsequent when you give me opportunity to answer. So it is a one-off election in Karnataka because of the local nature of politics. Nothing more should be read into it with respect to the whole South Indian dynamics. No, but may I, may I just for a moment pursue you on the fact that if I look at hard data, in the 2019 elections, you didn't get a single seat in Andhra Pradesh. You didn't get a single seat in Tamil Nadu. And you didn't get a single seat here in Kerala. You got 25 in Karnataka and 4 in Telangana. So out of 130 seats, you got 29, your ally AIDMK won. What does that suggest? Would you agree that this is, a, that southern India is still a bridge too far as of today? for the BJP. I'm not looking at the future, but as of today, it's a bridge too far going ahead into 2024. What will change in the next 12 months? I will not uh, use the word called bridge too far. Agreed. Before 2014, the southern Indian politics was very different. Uh, BJP, I would say, had a late start in Tamil Nadu, especially in many southern states. Congress was in power multiple times. Likewise, regional parties were in power multiple times. The Vajpayee era, we got a big jump. Tamil Nadu had seen four MPs at one point of time in Vajpayee era. After 2014, the party is growing rapidly, especially with the addition of leaders. Grassroots is building up. That is why I made this statement. The breakout performance is going to happen in 2024 for a variety of reasons. Whatever development work happens in Southern Tamil Nadu, my friends sitting along with me, the major point of contention they keep is what about Tamil pride? What about Kannada pride? What about Malayalam pride? This is how the politics was happening in the Southern state. This time it is G has done. 
and a combination of the cultural renaissance what has happened for tamil nadu kasi tamil sangamam saurashtra tamil sangamam the great sengol present in parliament which is after 1947 so this combination should push us over over the line the breakout performance we'll see in 2024 so you're saying development plus an element of national pride embodied in prime minister modi am i correct absolutely sir that is how it is going to be this time manikam tagore because you know the congress seems to believe that karnataka is india we won karnataka we are going to win the south we are going to win india karnataka may not necessarily be replicable rest of the country according to annamalai general election will be very different in particular to a state election where you have had traditional anti incumbency for more than 3 decades every election thank you so much uh, every election is a different election first uh, tamil nadu karnataka kerala and uh, telangana and andhra pradesh uh, from beginning itself after the independent india itself is is not a uh, feel where the hate politics has any kind of entrance itself bjp in the decan could not enter into a, the basic of their hate politics on religious basis or whatever basis they had expanded for long the hate politics of bjp particularly the rss backed uh, hate politics doesn't have a, a scope in uh, southern part of tamil nadu so southern part of india except in karnataka where they were able to break this janata parivars one group of mr ramakrishna hegde and they entered into that the mistakes of mr devagoda and others allowed bjp's entrance into karnataka therefore they captured with that thing all the karnataka leaders you take any karnataka leader of the bjp if maybe the ex chief minister who has just been voted out or all ex janata fellows who had been with ramakrishna hegde for that model of bjp to replicate in any other state in karnataka itself it's failing other states also it's going to be difficult because in in southern india the politics of education based on a primary education health and other uh, issues on which uh, real ma- real social and economic challenges are there it's a he different says, he crowd. says modi factor you are saying hate politics annamalai is saying development plus modi factor will become the breakout moment in 2024 modi modi is the first, when we say modi in the, uh, in southern part of tamil nadu Uh, people doesn't vote for it that's the thing i have to ask only one thing that thing that when, whether you want a modi government in central people will not vote for it that's my constituency and that that only i will get elected so you're saying mr modi is not modi a factor is not a workable factor in Tamil, in southern part of india except in few seat states in karnataka therefore only yesterday previous year also they had shown modi as the biggest things two election they had been defeated okay before i come to the other panelists you want a quick response to that mr modi is not a factor in southern india we've seen even in our polls mr modi's popularity much higher in the northern part and the western part than in southern india somehow even mr modi finds south india at times a bridge too far no sir for the modi factor to work uh, of course it's a great leader amazing personality the party has to be strong grassroots has to be organized to convert the modi's charisma to votes that is a problem which for the last 10 years the party is building up in case of tamil nadu the kind of respect modi ji enjoys is so high but to translate that into votes is a party's problem which we are addressing it second if i go to manikam tagore ji's constituency i think bulk of his voters are cracker industry people 8 lakh 7 lakh 6 lakh who solved their problem it is modi ji who stopped the chinese crackers from coming in modi ji who is solving the crackers issue in in supreme court we are so manikam takur ji will see in 2024 i'm talking of a localized phenomenon how tough it will be for him to get elected in 2024 also he will see thanks to modi ji very specific to his constituency very specific to the cracker industry okay manikam takur is staying calm one of the good things about the south is politician don't instantly respond uh, there is a calmness that kerala and southern india brings southern comfort but mr suresh reddy how calm are you because the next big election is in telangana and one thing that we've seen in the last 5 years the bjp is growing in telangana the bjp won a by election from karim nagar the bjp did very well in the hyderabad municipal elections became the principal opposition it has a large muslim population therefore you could argue the bjp is may be able to play on the demographics of telangana how worried are you going into the telangana election the bjp is emerging now as a challenger in the state of telangana uh thanks uh, rajdeep uh, because i begin my india today innings with you so very happy about it 
the only go uh, the only thing going south for bjp is its graph only thing south going for the bjp is yes. its graph is its graph and i say that with the reason that bjp had an opportunity in karnataka wherever state governments were functioning bjp was one of the state governments running in uh, uh, karnataka the performance uh, the election results have shown the what the performance was now coming to hyderabad well you are talking about bjp winning one seat or a couple of seats in the uh, municipal elections and about 3 4 seats in parliament in my view that's not a big number the reason being uh, in telangana on the last 9 years we had three big elections the 2014 election the 2018 election and 2019 election and in all the three elections uh, trs then brs now consistently performed and increased its po position from election to election number one it was not just limited only to the general elections when you come down to the local elections the municipal elections the zilla parishad elections the sarpanch elections brs party swept the polls how did it happen how is it that B, uh, brs is winning telangana continuously and bjp lost an opportunity in karnataka it is the regional performance so when you come to south modi factor or the other factors what bjp is propagating will not work in south what will work in south is the performance and you are competing against performing leaders who have performed remarkably well you don't see any anti incumbency after 10 years in power creeping anti incumbency against mr chandrashekar rao well we had elections a by election just couple of about 6 months back and we won it in spite of winning elections continuously the fact of the matter remains that the policies the programs the visibility availability of the leadership in telangana is a clear indication that what people of the state want So it is it, it is not dramatics or it is not uh, a very aggressive media which works there it is what's working on the ground so you're saying reach people in your state or indeed across the south vote for regional leaders on performance of regional governments am i correct they it's they, not about they, who runs delhi it's about who runs the states well historically rajdeep if you look at it the south was entirely under south uh, under congress control why did it wither away gradually because they could not reach out the leadership in delhi could not reach out understand the echoes understand the needs and develop regional leadership that's how the aspirations were not met okay. so this gave rise to regional parties the regional parties does not just merely to be regional but to perform and show okay interesting john britus kerala marches to its own beat you have your own politics which perhaps cannot be replicated in any anywhere as many believe the cpim is actually a regional party in kerala with mr pindrai vijayan a face of that regional party do you agree that you have a kerala model for the cpim that is limited today to kerala rajdeep uh, let me just make it very clear that uh, whenever you have a discourse from delhi or a delhi centric discourse you find all the parties based in south uh, being regional we are as national as other parties who are based out of north india so as suresh reddy said we would be equally national like those parties which are in uh, bihar or in uh, uttar pradesh second thing is that see 18% of the population that is south we contributes 35% of the gdp because we have kept bjp away from south that's it and third thing third thing what is the modi factor modi factor is creating laboratories in each state hindutva laboratory it can be halal or hijab in uh, karnataka it can be a shengol in tiru annamalai's place it can be shabarimala or something in kerala it can be something else in uh, telangana this will not work in the south and i can tell you that when you talk in terms of uh, cpm politics beyond our uh, political reach we have influence in the country which you can recognize that if you just look at the 
uh, history of those non-BJP governments in the country. It was left which was instrumental for such formations. So just because we are only, I mean, ruling Kerala, that doesn't mean that we are limited to the four boundaries of Kerala. Let me just make it very clear, Rajdi. Before the so-called Modi factor, mm. they had one assembly seat in Kerala. After the so-called anomalies, Modi factor, I mean, ganged up, we closed that account. So we'll make sure that there won't be any account being opened for BJP in Kerala. And out of 130 seats, they got maximum from Karnataka last time. That is 25 out of 28. I don't expect that to happen this time. Thank you. You know, before, uh, we, we will debate a lot of what you've said, but one thing you said, Sengol, you even suggested Sengol is a product of Hindutva politics. Is that, I mean, shouldn't you see it more as a, a as an issue of Tamil and uh, a, a symbol of pride of power rather than also link it to Hindutva politics? It seems that whatever the BJP does, you're going to somehow or the other find a way to demonize it and say, this is Hindutva politics at work. Rajdeep, the question is to me. Yes. See, let me you raise the Sengol let issue. Me, let me just tell you one thing. I am being a member of parliament. See, I am ashamed about what things happened there in parliament inauguration. Sardar Patel, see, he did away with all the Sengol, Simhasan, Crown, Palace Clowns, Palace Jodhis. All these have been brought back to Indian politics after 75 years. Is that, is that what the country wants now? Do you think that the southern people will came into all these tamashas which is we played out there? Never. And I will tell you one thing, the Tamil Nadu people are indolent enough to see through this game. Shengol is not going to work. If the government of India had invited the Panjayat presidents of this country for the inauguration of the parliament, I would have appreciated that. What do these sannyasis have to do with the parliament? Are they representatives of this India? Have they ever voted in an election? What nonsense is happening in this country? Do you think the people of South will stomach all this humbug that is being doled out? Okay. No, never. You want to uh, Annamala, you deserve a response. That is the BJP relying on symbolism. You bring the single, you think that it's going to invoke an element of Tamil sentiment, Tamil pride, and it will win you votes. You need to do more than just symbolism. Can you really challenge, for example, in your state, the powerful Dravidia identity that has driven the politics of Tamil Nadu for more than half a century? Uh, firstly, to respond to John, sir, uh, the concept of Sengol is there in Sangam literature, which is 2000 years before. Even when the religion of Muslim was born, even when the religion of Christianity was born, the word Sengol is very specific. Thiruvalluvar again 2000 years back writes 10 Thirukural in the Adhikaram called Sengon Mai for Sengol. Very unfortunate, uh, very eminent uh, leaders like John G. They try to equate cultural renaissance to BJP, which in a way I'm very proud of it. Because it is simply because after 1947, they have removed the soul of India, which means they have removed the soul of culture from the politics. And now when the soul is being brought back, I think they have a problem. The problem in South also, Rajiv Ji, it is not BJP is fighting DMK. In Kerala, BJP has to find the tactical adjustment politics of communists and Congress. When a BJP candidate is there, every election you look at it. It is not BJP versus Congress, BJP versus communists. When BJP is there, both of them join together. The same thing in other southern states also, coming to Suresh the DC's argument. I think Telangana, he mentioned one by-election. What about the three by-elections prior to that? All the three by-elections, BJP won. What about Hyderabad? BJP made a mark. I think we are living in a kind of paradise, a glass palace that we have built for ourselves. 2024, we are pretty sure. Tamil Nadu, we are not taking on one party. We are taking on multiple parties. Kerala, we are not taking on communists. We are taking on communists and Congress who will do tactical adjustment to defeat BJP. The reason BJP is yet to mark, make a mark because he mentioned 18% of population contributing 35%. I can show you in 1970, even before BJP was in picture, South was contributing more. In 1940-50, if I go, South was contributing more. That is not a label for us to proudly claim. When Nehruji shifted a lot of central government institutions to South, not because South has to prosper. Simply because to escape the attack of China, the escape the attack of Pakistan, many critical central government institutions were shifted to Chennai and Bangalore. That helped the state to grow. When 1947, when the first cabinet was there, there was something called the freight equalization policy. When a coal was lifted from Jharkhand, when the coal is coming all the way to Tamil Nadu, the freight was equalized simply because Tamil Nadu and other states have to develop. And arguing that is only counterproductive. 2024, just I'll end the last point, sir. 
my friend manik thakur will immediately say one point what about tamil pride for sanskrit you allocate more money for tamil you allocate less money in the public speeches he keeps telling when there are 17 sanskrit institutes and one tamil institute the money allocation is proportionate to 17 is to 1 out of that institute 90% sanskrit institutes came before bjp i requested the tamil nadu cm if you really care about tamil pride you create more tamil institutions we will get you money from more tamil pride sanskrit versus tamil 18% contributing to 35 south is giving more tax so that bihar and up is growing these are all arguments without any historical basis the argument is happening in south john brett has just raised his hand so you want to respond to what was just said particularly the tactical adjustment according to annamalai between the congress no, and the cpim then the rajdeep let me just tell you one thing i think i am sorry to say that uh, thiru annamalai is wrong on his statistics till 1970s the growth of north and south was more or less equal after 70s only the south surpassed in the growth that is there if you just check the niti aayog or planning commission uh, statistics you will understand that and second thing what has happened now, happened now is that dismantling of the planning commission usurping into the powers of the state denying the states the rightful share of the resources of the center now just see in 2023 24 One like eighty-three crores have been devoted to UP alone, whereas for all the South, it is one like sixty-three thousand crores. See the disparity, discrimination that is happening. And I will tell you one more thing: there is three D that is being practiced. One is disloyal the opposition government. If you cannot disloyal it, you disrupt it. If you cannot disrupt it, you defame it. This is the three D is the mantra of BJP. which will not work in the south you know in the south it appears from what i just heard that you'll almost feel as if you're being penalized you know that the center is penalizing you because you have uh, a, a better track record on education on health because you work to to bring your population levels down you claim you are the sort of economic hub of the country but you're being penalized not getting enough back is that a fair assessment because surely all of this has been in the making over the last decade it's not as if this has happened only after 2014 you so know all the no, no, mr bitters the argument you're making no, are, one, are not one, post 2014 only yes yes i will tell you one line what has happened now see after the 2014 see there was a planning commission there was gagged formula all this have been dismantled the only job of bjp is to construct building demolish institutions that is their hobby and i will tell you one thing what is happening now is that if you perform you perish perform and perish that's finance commission the finance commission is the one which is deciding on revenue yeah. sharing you build you build in you build buildings you demolish institutions that is their habit yes mr reddy yeah uh, getting to mr anamalai is uh, the singhal thing he said it's the soul of india if the soul of india is placed in parliament in my view the soul of india is the debate in parliament the sengal of course in my view it just reminds me of uh, part 2 of the king's coronation the way the event took place but again modi ji lost an opportunity while inaugurating the parliament how did he lose the opportunity he could have assured the honorable speaker of his party's support in ensuring that this new parliament will ensure a good debate he could have assured the honorable speaker that today only 14% of the bills are referred to the standing committees he could have assured the honorable speaker you could have availed that opportunity but nothing came the only thing came was population increase number of seats increased so obviously there'll be a new bhavan it's an opportunity lost for mr modi and for bjp i would feel i'll i'll come to delimitation and what it could do to the map of india and the uh, relations between southern states in the north in a moment but uh, manikam tagore from what the bjp here is suggesting they believe that they are bringing about a cultural renaissance they believe a number of symbols the sengal is seen as a symbol according to annamalai you can correct me as cultural renaissance opponents are seeing it in narrow hindutva terms Do you believe that you can defeat the BJP by demonizing them on Hindutva politics? 
or do you believe you are going to have to also offer a development agenda in karnataka for example you offered five guarantees and they seem to have worked basic guarantees to people is the congress very clear that the battle in the south cannot be fought like it is in the north you can't use ram mandir they cannot use hijab halal azan possibly you're going to have to find a different paradigm just as they've lost out where are you you are zero seats today in andhra pradesh a state that you were once powerful in telangana you are on the back foot in kerala it's mr vijayan who's come to power in tamil nadu you are reliant on dmk so it's all very well to attack bjp but where is the congress in the south uh, to my friend anamala is a simple thing usually whenever election comes bjp will come out with some kind of uh, symbols previous assembly elections in tamil nadu they came up with a veil veil murugan veil they our uh, union minister now mos murugan was taking veil everywhere i suppose my friend also took it in arvakurchi when he was vice president with veil they were having veil yatra across tamil nadu but now they are taking the sengol because as my friend was telling about that it is very auspicious or sengol is nine years where this sengol has gone when modi has modi ji has come prime minister in 2014 the, where is that sengol was there for nine years why they were not speaking about it for bjp particularly the same model of everywhere every across india they have a pattern rss pattern that we will have symbolism and we will have rath yatra we will take ram we will take somebody else all this kind of that is not going to work in tamil nadu sengol after the ponin selvan film they had got that sengol story and whatsapp university is making out and they are believing that it is going to big, make a big markment that's not going to happen in the ground yeah, but these are economic but, issues it is but, social justice issues but be, but beyond sengol as i said you are zero in andhra pradesh a state you were in par in telangana you are on the back foot uh, uh, you uh, uh, you given up uh, power to the uh, in kerala for the last decade now to the cpim where is the congress party what's your model it's very simple brother you have to understand that congress idea idea of congress is occupied by jagan like parties which congress would bank has shifted to jagan because of the division bifurcation of telangana and andhra pradesh therefore we need to understand that the idea of congress the idea of inclusive society is been accepted in south india it is not that hate politics of bjp or a, or a religion based politics of uh, bjp has been accepted in, in sir, you, sir you sir you you divided india. andhra pradesh let's be so very clear please do not blame anyone else but yourself for the division of andhra yeah, pradesh we, you divided andhra pradesh yeah, andhra we, are and telangana. We, are, we are proud that we had formed a state called telangana and the formation day is today and we take full responsibility for that division of that state and we take it we, we take it uh, pride and i suppose that my friend suresh should also give that uh, uh, credit to us that we had formed that state but but we do kept you our word okay but let me take that forward do you agree in both telangana and in andhra pradesh today the parties in power are regional parties in a way jagan amondradi wires are cp and brs are regional parties have the national parties lost out to regional parties in the south who are more connected in a way through regional leadership regional culture andhra pradesh is a different story because of the division Uh, uh, congress uh, wood bank shifted to mr jagan and therefore ysrp was formed and they were able to keep that it was on a pain they are fighting that election here in telangana this time brs will be defeated because of high un- anti incumbency and unemployment and agrarian crisis is in a big way and i i can say to you that this time ksr will be defeated all the by elections you are mentioning i had been there in the by elections how money was flowing like water in mungod as well as in uh, in the huzurabad or in uh, dubaka money politics of money was in biggest way so who's your enemy number one in telangana is it the trs or is, uh, is it the brs or the bjp brs is our enemy in telangana <laughs> you know mr suresh reddy whenever i hear congressman target brs we keep hearing about this grand alliance that is going to be formed ahead of 2024 against the bjp here i see there is no alliance this is precisely what's happening at the state level your opponent your opponent is the congress ksr wants to form a grand alliance nationally they also want to form one it's not going to happen beneficiary the bjp uh, rajdeep what's happening is uh, the definition of national and regional parties is changing definition yes and uh, national parties are turning regional and regional parties are turning national 
regional parties are expanding. So the question of regional parties being confined to fight the national party is no more now. And I can quote examples. Today, when you, when you asked me, can KCR form an alliance without BJP, without Congress? Yes, he can. How we can? We, we're proving ourselves now. It's going to happen not merely in South, but from the in the entire country. The which states are which state will uh, which will you go to? I mean, it seems you know when uh, KCR Gadu goes into a Maharashtra or goes into neighboring states, do you really believe that he can attract votes there? When I say alliances, when I say expanding, it doesn't merely mean winning elections in those states. It is not just contesting elections. It is taking your ideas, taking your policies, sharing it. And to quote a small example of how this is churning out, uh, there was a recently a mammoth public meeting in Kamam a few months back. Close to a million people attended it. And all the, uh, roughly about four to five chief ministers attended, former chief ministers, political party leaders. The best spirit of federalism was exhibited there where one chief minister, say, from Kerala, appreciated the efforts of the Telangana government and said he would replicate it. The Delhi chief minister appreciated some efforts of the other state and he said he would replicate it. The Punjab chief minister said he would do it. Opposition leader from Uttar Pradesh came and said, these are brilliant ideas which need to be further strengthened. So what Niti Ayo could not do, this public meeting has delivered. So this is an example of how cooperative federalism can not only bring in good prosperity to the states, but also can run the country. Okay. The exchange, what I'm trying to point out is the good policies, uh, the good initiatives of each state are not being emulated because of the suppression of the BJP here. If the regional parties kind of progress, definitely the country will tend to benefit from the various ideas. Now, we're not just talking can about... I can I just stop you for a moment, though? Because one of the issues that he raised, which I want you to address right away, whenever one travels to South India, and recently in Karnataka, we were told figures like 25 to 50 crores are spent per candidate per constituency of major parties. I'm told in Telangana, it will be 50 crore plus. He just mentioned money power. He mentioned it. Money was flowing like water in, in the by-election. Is that true? That in South India, increasingly, politics has become cash and carry. And if you don't win, you can always switch over to the winning side. Defections are also part of the game. Yes or no? Well, honest answer. You see, I'll answer it in two parts. Reason is, since they can't win elections, they blame that you won because of money. They never give us credit that we won because of our policies, initiatives, and the other factors. Just because you kept on losing, you say they spent money and uh, you're winning. Are you denying no, and, that and, money and is if, spent? And if we are, uh, Zip, and if we are spending money and winning, you think they'll keep quiet? The BJP at the center? They've been hounding us day and night. So there's no question of money. Money, as a per se, is a challenge for the nation. Elections have become expensive. It is for all the political parties, election commission to sit and debate it. We'll do it the other day. But today, the allegations against us, because we are performing, you just snub us and say you have money and you're, you're kind of winning. Okay. Yes, uh, John. Rajdeep, uh, absolutely, it's a very serious topic. See, the election expenditure, it's minimal in Kerala in the country. Minimal in Kerala. The minimal. Low, lowest. And who raised the bar of this election expenditure? Just see what would have been the spending of BJP in Karnataka. Last Lok Sabha election, BJP would have easily spend something like 50,000 crores. And 224, I'm sure that... No, no, you're, you're throwing a number 50,000 crores. Based on what? No. You're throwing a number at us. BJP spent 50,000 crores. Yeah, I'm, see, you can, you, you can absolutely just go and analyze these, I mean, spend they have done. And I will tell you, when even Kerala, they had 15% vote five years back. Now it has come down to 12%. Just see the spend of BJP in Kerala. Just see the spend of BJP in Kerala. So actually, I understand the election expenditure in South, especially in Telangana, Karnataka, etc. has gone up. And it is very minimal in Kerala because we have kept away the BJP. But because of BJP's active involvement in Kerala, it can go up. That's a reality. They are raising the bar. 
they are raising the bar across the nation and one uh, response to manikam manikam you need to be realistic i am just telling you that if the common interest of this of these political parties non bjp political parties is to keep bjp away from power forget about your petty rivalries and please remember that manikam you have great, great friend of mine your strength is in 150 160 seats alone 160 seats you concentrate there fight the bjp win 50% they are out of power you win 50% of the 160 seats bjp is thrown out of power instead of that don't go here and there and don't send your leaders from north to kerala karnataka to contest and so on no, no, forget minute. about it no, no, yeah. one minute are you asking the congress to abandon kerala also now come on no no i mean here is i mean no, no, rajiv no no kerala kerala will abandon congress <laughs> no no look you are telling them to leave kerala you tie up with them in kerala i am If only you believe bjp is your main opponent you tie up with them I in am, kerala i am only giving an unsolicited advice to manikam that they should be realistic that's all nothing more nothing less uh, you know anna malai somewhere in all of this as i listen to all of the others they seem to see you or the bjp rather as enemy number one in some form or the other uh and they play on regional uh, on a more regional sentiment here your leaders come to kerala or even outside uh, kerala they demonize the state through kerala story then you have the ma the manner in which the imposition of hindi over the years there's a sense hindi hindu hindustan and that leads to a backlash particularly in tamil nadu we saw in kannada in karnataka also an element of kannada pride was played by the congress even using nandini versus amul is part of the problem for the bjp that because you become such a dominant party in delhi one size no longer fits all you are going to have to adjust to local sensitivities whether in tamil nadu whether in an andhra whether in a karnataka kerala you are not able to do that you are going to have to change your strategy bring up strong regional leaders and cater to regional sensitivities you can't run the south from delhi sir if you have observed uh, our manikam thakur ji used a word called high command high command used the word call high command i can proudly sit in my chair and call mr modi ji as a karyakarta more than a prime minister it's a karyakarta just like i am a karyakarta in bjp in tamil nadu modi ji is a karyakarta from gujarat sitting in delhi as a prime minister it is the high command rule from delhi dismissing governments you take a flight by them rajiv gandhi ji's flight lands one chief minister dismissed 1968 hindi imposed 1986 second education policy hindi imposed 2020 for the very first time in the new education policy we said regional language take a third language of your choice i find it very funny the whole problem the national parties have got a bad name in tamil nadu simply because of congress it is a congress culture some of people equated to bjp also i am sitting here manikam thakur ji also mentioned a statement that unemployment is rising just because his leader rahul gandhi ji is unemployed doesn't mean the youth of this country is unemployed simply say and john ji mentioned a number called 50000 uh, crore i just hope and pray sir your number 50000 crore when you mention it is 27 constituencies multiplied by 2000 is 54000 crore if you are going by the same numbers i really think you got to relearn your max starting from first standard sir now 50000 now, for the nation last nation lok sabha election now looking at the whole thing sir if you look at bjp per se we are very clear the leadership has to be regional absolutely regional that is why you see assam himanta biswas sharma if he is growing in congress by now himanta biswas sharma should be will be thrown out if there is a devendra fadnavis in maharashtra they would have cut him to size all the regional leadership bjp is allowing to grow in tamil nadu also bjp will grow he mentioned about vel yatra 20 years no mlas in assembly tamil nadu assembly after vel yatra four now sengol you will see 39 no but the fact is the one strong regional leader you had from the south was bs yadurappa and he was marginalized before the election the question is do you want to run the southern states from delhi the point i made earlier you're saying hindi imposition will not happen even though increasing the official releases are there in delhi in hindi and many mps and uh, other parties are complaining about it are you very clear that whether it is in a tamil nadu whether it's in a kerala you can't demonize kerala through kerala story and expect keralaites to vote for you one thing does the nobody nobody yeah. is demonizing sir nobody is demonizing when there is a director when there is a scriptwriter there is an historical evidence 
even the celebration of Kerala's story in Mumbai, there are a lot of survivors standing in the stage and they were talking about their story of what happened. It's a story. But should the Prime Minister of the country be promoting it? Should your ministers be promoting it? The Prime Minister out of Prime Minister never mentions about Kerala's story demonizing Kerala. This is a time that can happen in any part of the country. It is as serious as a time bomb. Prime Minister mentioned about the concept that is happening. Can John Bridgerji, who owns a television channel himself, can he say not even one incident happened inside Kerala? Mr. Britters? Mr. Rajdeep, can you imagine the Prime Minister of this country being a brand ambassador of a movie like Kerala's story, which should be dumped into the septic tank? No, why should can it you be dumped? That? No, no, why, no, it should be watched by people. They are entitled to watch it. Sir, we have permitted this movie to be watched and screened across the state. Did we ban it? No. We know the people will ban it on their own. And can you imagine the Home Minister, who is the custodian of national unity and integration, while campaigning in Karnataka, saying that, beware, Kerala is near you. Are we Pakistan? The most peace-loving state in the country. They should rely on the indices of the Nidhi Ayog. And they have depicted Kerala as Somalia. Depicted Kerala as Somalia, the Prime Minister. And they have called Kerala the hotbed of terrorism. See, what is the statistics they have? I had asked a couple of questions in Lok Sabha, uh, Laji Sabha, and I asked about the love, love Jihad. Not even a single instance of Love Jihad was referred to by the Home Minister. And even conversion, only two cases of conversion was investigated by the NIA. And what is this concoction of this? Okay, and I, I will I, tell you one thing. The only university applicable to BJP is WhatsApp University. Rajiv, That's sir, all. you come with me. I can show the hundreds of Karyakartas butchered in Kerala. Starting from Jai Krishna Master and Kannur. We will start the history from Kannur. Mr. Anadore, please stay back no, in no, Kerala. No, no, I will, no, no, I will come, I, with, I will you come along with you I will Kerala. come with you everywhere. Why PFI was banned? Simply because there was a state sir, support given to PFI inside Kerala. Hundreds of BJP Karyakartas butchered in the daylight like a dog. And now he's talking about the most peace-loving state in the country as Kerala. It must be the biggest joke of the 21st century. PFI and RSS are hand in glove. Just see the, just see the electoral scene of Karnataka. Why did the PFI's political wing contested in the coastal Karnataka? It helped our BJP only. Why didn't they ban okay, their political can I, party? Can I, can I just... Yes, they want OIC, John? they want PFI, they want everybody there. Just to split the opposition votes. John, That's I'm, all. Feeling, I'm feeling like the speaker of the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha struggling to, uh, to get a word in. Uh, but as we conclude, there's one issue that perhaps is going to be troubling to the politics of the South going ahead. Delimitation. Uh, many believe that this could set off another North-South conflict in a way. By 2026 or a little later, if delimitation comes the number of seats of the northern Hindi heartland states could rise based on population and the southern states could be penalized for their lower population growth rates. This plus the fact that you have better economic indices could lead to resentment and an alienation. How do you believe delimitation should go ahead, Manikam Tagore, or should everyone sit across a table and build a consensus before delimitation is decided upon? This could be the big hot potato going ahead. 20... 2024 elections will decide that thing because the, after the new parliament building, this delimitation has come into picture and we can't trust Modi and Amisha. They can do whatever they want and they can. They wanted to uh, reduce the voice of South India means they will use whatever means in the name of delimitation itself. It is a very dangerous pattern where the performing states are going to be punished and in the name of reservation on women's reservation, they will club up that uh, debate and they will start RSS will WhatsApp universities will start that when we are speaking against delimitation they will say we are against women this is going to happen and all the southern uh, state uh, chief ministers and member of parliaments has to rise it and we will rise it as you will oppose it we will oppose it because we need this government particularly when Amisha is there they can do whatever they want and what? they had done it in the earlier uh, amendments also to the parliament. Parliament has become just a rubber stamp uh, institution. Every rules has been broken and there is no system in place and parliament 
has just become only the place where Mr. Modi can speak his man ki baat. Will you also oppose it, BRS? Yes, uh, delimitation is a big concern for most of South India and particularly Telangana. Reason, one is performing states are being penalized and population control has been part of performance. And if you reduce population, you're going to lose seats. So the question of how do you delimit will be the critical issue. And like you said, we feel that a consensus should arrive. How do you arrive at a consensus? What would be the parameters? What? Let me give a minute. For example, now population is a criteria. Why not add geographical area to? That's one area. Second is, there is a lot of floating in the country. There, there, there are lakhs and lakhs of people from, say, Orissa, Bihar, working, living in Telangana. But only when it comes to vote, they go there. So their census says there are voters, there's a population there. So with these floating uh, population, one, geographical area, number two, since you are performing, you are uh, being penalized. These are definitely issues which will be part of the campaign in 2024. It will be part of the 2024 campaign it in a way. Be. Anna Malai, where do you stand on delimitation? I don't know, sir, why my friends are in a very panicky mode. Delimitation has to happen because one MP cannot manage 16 lakh, 22 lakh kind of population. Of course, population is not going to be the only criterion for demilitation. Everybody knows. That is why from 1971, we have stopped it. 100% we are sure. And BJP comes back to power in 2024. An accommodative spirit, delimitation happened. Just to add one more point. Inside Tamil Nadu, we have about four distinct geographical areas. We are talking about the state. Let us talk about inside the state. I belong to the Congo region, inside Tamil Nadu. They're like, no, when delimitation happens, we will be in trouble because our population is much less. The other parts of Tamil Nadu will get more seats. So not only at the national level, not only at the state level, even at the sub-regional level, it has to be a carefully done nexus, which BJP will 100% do. Interesting point. John Bitters. No, I am not against delimitation. Delimitation can happen. But if you increase the number of seats according to the population, that is going to be a serious issue for the country, unity of the country. And I will tell you one thing. I will request this present government to read closely. To this delimitation and freezing of the seats. That's all. Okay, we're we are reaching the end. It's been fascinating listening to all four articulate voices. I'm going to ask you one simple question and I want a one-line answer. What, according to you, makes the South politics distinctive to politics of any other part? And I'm using South in a very generic sense. I know that each of you have your distinctive identities. What makes politics in the South so special? What should the world and India know about the politics of the South that they don't? Manika, you start. There is no hate politics allowed in South India. No hate politics allowed in South India. Hindu, Muslim, nahi chalega. There is no hate politics. Okay. What makes South politics distinctive according to you? Well, the South politics is to spread the flavor. For example, like how the culinary flavor, South breakfast has become the national breakfast. It spread the flavor. Similarly, the South politics also spread the fla flavor of love to the North. Okay. Uh, you know, the, from the midday meal scheme that MGR or Kamraj before him started, then MGR, the great welfare ideas have, of course, always come from the South and spread education in Karnataka. Anna Malai, what makes South politics special Very distinctive? Dynasty, family, absolute corruption. <laughs> Since you spoke about dynasty, family, absolute corruption, you want to tell us where did you get those audio tapes that allegedly exposed the Tamil Nadu finance minister, uh, PTR? I should not tell you my secret, sir. I just hold it to myself. When normally when corruption rises, the information starts coming out from the inside of that system only, sir. So they came from inside the DMK? Came from inside only, sir. Okay. Final word. What makes South distinctive? Rajiv, South is truly national. We don't allow hate and hatred. And I would also say that dynasty is better than hate and hatred. Okay. Dynasty is better than hate and hatred, says uh, John Brittus. We leave it to uh, the educated Southern audiences to decide that and indeed a national audience but wonderful to have four articulate voices from this part of the country holding the four give them a very big hand ladies and gentlemen it's been great listening to them thank you so much thank you thank you so much rajdeep and all the speakers as we promised it was a fiery